What's up, Eco Nerdlings? In this podcast, we're going to be discussing how to manage water pollution. So reducing water pollution requires that we prevent it, work with nature to treat sewage, cut resource use and waste, and reduce poverty and slow population growth. So reducing surface water pollution from non-point sources. One of the largest non-point sources we have is agriculture. We need to reduce the erosion caused by agriculture, reduce the amount of fertilizers that we use, uh, plant buffer zones of vegetation that will prevent all of the runoff from occurring, uh, use more organic farming techniques. We need to use pesticides prudently or not at all. We need to control the runoff and we need to have tougher pollution regulations for livestock operations. We also need to deal better with animal waste. So laws can help reduce water pollution from point sources. Two of those were the 1972 Clean Water Act and the 1987 Water Equality Act. The Environmental Protection Agency is experimenting with a discharge trading policy that uses market forces, basically a cap and trade system. But could this allow pollutants to build up? So what the case study for this unit is the United States experience with reducing point source pollution. So we do have numerous improvements in water quality over the decades. Uh, some lakes and streams, however, are still not safe for swimming and fishing. And we have treated wastewater that still produces algal blooms. We also have high, water, uh, high levels of mercury, pesticides, as well as other toxic materials that we actually find in fish from whenever we didn't have such strict laws. So all of that pollution has bioaccumulated up the food chain and right now there's a huge list of fish that we actually have that we're not even supposed to eat or we have a list of fish and it tells us you know you can eat you know one serving of this per month per week one serving per year or don't eat it at all because of all of the bioaccumulation of these different types of toxic compounds so we have leakage of gasoline storage tanks into our groundwater we also have many violations of federal laws and regulations so we do need to strengthen the Clean Water Act if we want our water to remain clean and keep getting cleaner as the decades go by. So sewage treatment reduces water pollution. We do have septic tank systems and wastewater sewage treatment plants. We have primary and secondary sewage treatment. So the primary sewage treatment is a physical process, basically separating out the solids from the liquids. And then we have a secondary sewage treatment, which actually is a biological process, and we use bacteria to help break down the toxins. And then sometimes we actually employ the use of a tertiary or advanced sewage treatment. And this is a special filtering process, and it can include bleaching and chlorination of the water. So many cities actually violate federal standards for sewage treatment plants, meaning they're not doing what they're supposed to. So should there be separate pipes for sewage and storm runoff? probably a good idea. And the health risks of swimming in water with blended sewage wastes, well, what are they? It all depends on what's being released into the water. And again, that falls back into enforcing those laws and actually going out to those treatment plants and seeing what's going on, testing the water to see what's being put back out into the environment. So looking at this diagram right here, this is showing the primary and secondary sewage treatment of water. So the raw sewage comes in and it basically goes through this bar screen. Uh, it separates out the large particles from the small particles. We have our grit chamber and then we have a settling tank where all the sludge basically settles down into here. We have our sludge digester and eventually it goes into a sludge drying bed. So the cleaner water gets transported into the secondary sewage treatment plant or sewage treatment part. So we have an aeration tank where oxygen is added back into the water. We have a settling tank again, so more sludge can settle out and eventually go into the sludge drying bed. And then we have the treatment using chlorine, which helps to kill a lot of the bacteria. And then eventually we release the treated water back out into the environment. However, that treatment doesn't take out a lot of the nitrates, uh, and the phosphates and things like that, so we do see those algal blooms. It does, however, take out the majority of the bad bacteria. However, it doesn't take out everything. And so we also, like I said, have that sludge drying bed. 
Well, this is either disposed of in a landfill or ocean, or it's applied to cropland, pastures, or rangelands and used as fertilizer. So we can improve conventional sewage treatment. Peter Montag is an environmental scientist, and some of the suggestions that he had were to remove toxic waste before the water goes to the municipal sewage treatment plants. He said that we need to reduce or eliminate the use of waste of toxic chemicals, and we also should be using composting toilet systems. And he also said we could employ the use of wetland-based sewage treatment systems as well. John Todd is a biologist, and he said we should be using natural water purification systems. Basically, sewer water flows into a passive greenhouse, and then solar energy and natural processes are used to remove and recycle nutrients. And we use a huge diversity of organisms. So this is an example right here of an ecological wastewater purification plant in Rhode Island in the United States. So as you can see, lots of plants are used to help purify water. And this is one of the suggestions to remove heavy metals as well and help to decrease the bioaccumulation of heavy metals such as mercury. So there are sustainable ways to reduce and prevent water pollution. It's just getting to those sustainable ways. So developed countries such as the United States, we need to have a bottom-up political pressure to pass stricter laws on water quality. And in developing countries, unfortunately, Little has really been done to reduce water pollution. However, China does have an ambitious plan. It's just, are they going to be able to implement it? So one of the facts is that in developing countries, 70% of industrial waste are dumped directly into the waters without any type of treatment. So what are some solutions or methods for preventing and reducing water pollution? Well, on a broad scale, we can prevent groundwater contamination we can reduce non-point runoff, and we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of this lecture. Uh, we can reuse treated wastewater for drinking and irrigation as long as it is treated properly. We can find uh, substitutes for toxic pollutants. We can work with nature to actually treat sewage, and that's what we just saw. Uh, we can practice the free, three R's of reduce, reuse, and recycle. And we can reduce air pollution, reduce poverty, and slow population growth. The less people on Earth, the less pollution we're going to produce. And then what can you and I do as individuals? Well, we can fertilize our gardens and yard plants with manure or compost instead of buying inorganic fertilizers from the store. We can minimize our use of pesticides, especially if we live near bodies of water. Uh, we can prevent yard waste from entering storm uh, drains. Um, not using water fresheners in our toilets, so you know those little blue discs you put in there? Not very good for the environment. Uh, not flushing unwanted medications in the toilet. So a lot of people, when they have medicines that they don't use, they have extra, they'll dump it in the toilet. That winds up in our water supply. And, you know, water treatment doesn't always take out all of those chemicals. And then not pouring pesticides, paint, solvents, oil, antifreeze, or other products containing harmful chemicals down the drain or onto the ground. So for all of our lectures that we've had about water pollution, you should have got three big ideas out of them. Number one, there are a number of ways to purify drinking water, but the most effective and cheapest strategy is pollution control, basically preventing it from happening because cleanup is always going to be expensive and it's always going to be time consuming. Number two, that the key to protecting the oceans is to reduce the flow of pollution from land and air and from streams emptying into those ocean waters. And number three, reducing water pollution requires that we prevent it, work with nature in treating sewage, cut resource use and waste, and reduce poverty and slow the population growth. Well, this is the Queen Nerdling signing off for now. Stay nerdy till next time.